Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. People drive me crazy. I think you've started this podcast like 65% of the time with people driving me crazy. Probably. That's how crazy people drive me. <laughs> like, I don't understand how people read something you write. And let's just keep it super simple. I write about the pink um, coaster that I have, and it's made out of silicone. And that's it. I write about only the pink coaster made out of silicone. leave out the gray one. How rude of you. And then the person reads it, and they're like, well, it sounds to me like you're jealous of the glass. What? Who mentioned anything about glass? We talked about silicon coaster that mm-hmm. are pink. That's it. We mentioned a color, a coaster, are you jealous and a of the silicon. Glass because you want to They're just, on top of the coaster. <laughs> no, it's just what they've decided that means, and so they spew it out. And then when you call on them to point to where you talked about anything about glasses, they go silent. And that's <laughs> why people drive me crazy. At least they're going silent and not completely gaslighting you. I think, from my perspective, being you and having to deal with me doesn't sound like fun. I'm going to tell you why, though. You know me. Do I speak up about things when I'm not pretty sure that I'm right? Not usually. Okay. Generally don't, right? I mean, sometimes it happens. I'm not perfect. And even then, I'm not always right when I think I am. But you always admit when you're proven wrong. But I try not to have an argument about anything unless I'm pretty sure I'm right. Because why argue? Right. So you can beat the other person down and get them to admit they're wrong when they're not? Like, that's stupid. Like, the only time I argue is when I know that I'm right. And it must drive you crazy because you say something, and then here I come, and then you're like, oh, no. Well, you know what? To be it only drives me crazy when I'm 100% sure that you're wrong, but you're like adamant about how right you are. But the redeeming factor is entirely that when I'm like, A is A and B is B, you're like, okay, my bad. All good. Well, yeah, I won't. That's <laughs> what I was going to say, too, is I won't. You show me the truth. I have open mind. I'm not there to win. I'm there to set the record straight. It isn't even about being right. It's about setting the record straight. And this is what I thought it should be. And I say something and then you say, no, here's this and here's this. And then I kind of go in my head. I'm like, huh, totally missed that. Okay, you're right. Sorry, I was wrong. That's why we made the agreement long ago that if it's something that's Googleable, one of us is going to go to the Google so that the conversation is over. You know what's funny, though? Nine out of ten times when we do that, we find out that we're both right. It's true. We're using a word one way, and I'm using it a different way. Infuriating final final answer, though, because we're well, both true. Right, it's huh? just funny because nine out of the ten times that we've Googled it, easily it's come up with, oh, you're both right. Like, remember when we used to discuss, is it mobile or mobile? It's pronounced both ways. When it's a city in Alabama, it's definitely mobile. It's just funny. I think it's hilarious that, yeah. like, there's those little weird nuances, especially because... You guys in Canada kind of follow the British you way people. of English. Not you people, you guys. You people. I left out half the population. Women. You people. Damn Canadians. Yeah, well. But that, you know, too many people want to do what that person's doing. And in a sense, it's controlling. Because they're taking their thought. <clears throat> it doesn't even apply to anything. You have to say. I mean, come on. At least if they said, no, I wasn't pink, man. It was purple. It's a fuchsia. Then they're arguing about a point you made about the object. And they're at least admitting that the Sorry, object I think was. Sorry, you're blind in that it's fuchsia. But to tell me that I'm jealous of glass, that's like, talk about an out of left field comment. Just shut up. You know, speaking of controlling, I read the most horrifying thing today. Horrifying thing? <laughs> Truly horrifying. What kind of horrifying well, thing? Well, it's an I the asshole. Yes, but as always. Well, that's cool. She finds. And I call it curates because it's a fancier word. But, you know, 
We'll say finds this time around. I she finds it, these Am I the Assholes. I don't even know where she finds them, but she finds them. And then she doesn't read them to me. Then as we're going through it, I'm allowed to stop her and ask for clarification and whatnot. And then at the end, she's going to ask me who the asshole is. And I'm going to say, and she might ask me some questions and argue with me. Or a lot of times what she'll do is she'll just tell me who she thinks the asshole is. And if they're different, then we kind of argue about it a little bit. And by argue, I don't mean yell and scream. I mean, we like parry each other with points. And well, because you, go, this, you that, always miss thing. something or I miss something. Yeah, busy reading. It's exactly. just is what it is. So we parry the points. But anyway, how about her? What's it about? Am I the asshole for wanting to keep social media? Yes. We don't need to go any further. My fiance and I are set to wed in October. We have been together for three years. I have had social media for 20 plus years. My fiance suddenly feels uncomfortable with me having social media and wants me to delete my current account and create a joint account with him approving quote-unquote friends together new account. I have offered him full access to my current account and have absolutely nothing to hide, but I do not want to delete my accounts and start fresh. I use my social media platforms to help with lost pets and fostering pets as well as skin cancer awareness forums, not to mention keeping track of my family that live around the country. My fiancé doesn't want to move forward with me stating an independent attitude. Am I the asshole for not deleting my accounts and having joint accounts? Wow, man. I laugh because I know exactly how you feel. People who demand to share your social media account are insecure assholes. End of story. He wants to delete her existing one and create a brand new one where yeah, he gets to that's approve it. Shared account. Oh my God. They have it together. I have a different approach. My approach is everything is left log in on my phone and I leave my phone wherever the hell I leave my phone. Half the time, I don't know where my phone is. And you could literally pick it up and go into Instagram and go browse my DMs. You're not going to find anything because I don't give a shit about that stuff. And that's why it bothers me that you would, if you were that person and you wanted to be in the same account together, why? What don't you trust? I mean, how am I supposed to like get surprises for you for your birthday or whatever. How can I ask people to help me with that stuff if I can't have a little bit of privacy? But I get it. If you don't earn it, you don't deserve it. I think privacy in having your social media accounts and your text messages and whatever is granted from the beginning. That's not something that anybody else should feel entitled to. You take it away if and exactly. when they cheat on you or something and you agree to continue the relationship. At that point, their integrity is in question. When you had your little feud with Twitter, you were like, we're deleting all the Twitter accounts. And I think back now you only meant that you probably should deactivate all the Twitter accounts, yes. just not use them. Correct. But I took you like literally. No, I was a little annoyed by that. And now all of our Twitter accounts are gone. But it is what it is. I mean, I've learned not to let stupid stuff like that, you know, get me upset. Just is, it what, is it what it is. is. Life goes on. You continue. Sometimes it's a good thing to be able to start over fresh. Right. You know, but this is the most controlling bullshit I have ever experienced in my life. Yeah. Like, who the fuck are you? Not you, but yeah. Who the it. fuck are you to control? What I'm speaking to what I follow. Blah, 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 blah. But there's Eat 684 dicks, my friend. But there's people out there like that who think that way. I know. They really think that way. I'd be like, mm -hmm. I'm glad that we paid for all this wedding stuff on your card because fuck you. I'm. Yeah, he's out. I mean, it just, that's insanity, man. And right. like, no, I wouldn't be changing anything. Like I said, I feel like the trust thing has to go both ways. I feel like when we got into our relationship and we committed to one another, from that point forward, it had to be, I trust you, both your your actions and how you would look towards me, like not to be a snoop. You know, because I don't give you a reason to be a snoop. You shouldn't be a snoop. Pretty simple, right? And if I do give you a reason to be a snoop, you probably still shouldn't be a snoop, but you're, I would say you are well justified if you, especially if you confront the person and say, yo, this is what I saw. If they deny it at that point, be a snoop. But honestly, if let you, it go. You know, any interesting conversation you ever have on your social media, you share with me. 
Why yes. the fuck do I care to read about the other ones? Well, that's the thing. I don't have other ones. Well, and like, I'm sure you have like scammer conversations that you don't share with me because they're anti climactic. Oh, yeah, but, that happens a lot because I don't have patience for them as much as I used to anymore. And I go right at them right away and it yeah. doesn't really work. It's they fun. run. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's less fun. <laughs> you know, you, the, the funny part is when you listen to that stuff, the only reason you're laughing is because how dumb they are. Like today, when I get that email telling me that Facebook is going to shut down my business account, that doesn't exist under that email address, by the way. Um, it's a forward that I don't use for anything but forward. But in any event, they're telling me they're going to shut my account down and I got to go here. And they sent it from a hotmail.com account. There's yeah, been, sure. I didn't tell you. I meant to tell you earlier and I forgot. But there's been a big increase the last three or four days of our Facebook pages being tagged by mega spam. And like just tagged in a post. Can you like untag yourself? Yeah, I've been reporting them and untag, but there's like five and six a day. What do so I need to look for? Because I can help you click, keep that clear. Oh, I just I'm get, not an asshole like I that. I hate. I, anyway, why are we having this conversation? In because I was so. going to tell you something funny. So a while back, we created the one meta account that, we, and we connected all of our Facebook pages and all of our business Instagram accounts to it. And the one day I was sitting there, and you, you were chatting with scammer. You must have been. But the messages that they were sending were, and they were one of the, you know, like. I want to get fan scammers. Oh, God. And they were coming at you. And these messages are popping up. And I'm like, what the hell is this shit? What is going on? <laughs> so funny. But like once I read a couple of them, I knew what was happening. You like, know what's funny, scammer though? was attacking you. And I remember coming in here and being like, so how's your scammer? <laughs> you know what's funny is you think about it. If someone had something to hide, as soon as they hear something like that, be like, boom. Yeah. Your heart would drop. Like I just laugh at that because it's like you could have asked me any question you wanted to. I'd have told you what it was going on. It's yeah. just funny. Hilarious. And it's just that when something like that pops up and it's unexpected, you're well, yeah, like, what the hell? you're like, what the fuck is this? But imagine <laughs> if you were with somebody, right? And they saw that. Like that's not good. Sure, I could sit here, certain people. Yeah, but I don't know. I think that. That's one of the amazing things about a good relationship is that if you start off both trusting each other, the two parts that we talked about, well, as long as one of you doesn't damage the trust along the way, you should be good because you've already figured out that you're compatible when those things are in place. Why do, why do you need to read the dumb shit that I say to my friends? I don't even you know. know like- well, you know what's not fair about that? Especially in a society where they don't really talk on the phone much anymore. Because in in my day, when I was a you know young whippersnapper, oh, when I was a young whippersnapper, we used to get on the damn phone and it's talk to people. We used to talk to people on the phone and be like, "Yo, what's up? Let me tell you something. You hurt my feelings, bitch. What's your problem?" You know, like we did. We would have the argument on the phone. Actually, had now, some arguments over the phone. Yeah, and it took like you know ten minutes, and it was over. Not like ten hours. Text message arguments take longer. And so that's how people communicate, right? Well, it's not fair to have your friend and you are mad at me about something and you're not allowed to like vent to your friend about it because you got a fear that I'm going to see it. Why? First well, of all, I would hope as if you saw it like a month later when the conflict is resolved and don't remember what was going on right. and then it gets taken out of context. What I'm saying is you still need to be respectful of your partner. That doesn't give you carte blanche to be like, man, the person's an MF and beep, 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 beep. No. That doesn't mean that because you're dissing them to somebody and you're kind of destroying their hope of being friends with your friends by doing that kind of stuff. But to right. vent and be like, my gosh, I don't know what to do. I'm so frustrated, blah, blah, blah. blah. That's a different story. And you should be allowed to without right. any fear that there, someone's going to. There's say- nothing wrong with asking your friends for advice on how to resolve a situation. Right. Big problem with you venting to your friends about what an asshole your partner is all the time. Sometimes you sit there and you think to yourself, OK, I messed up, but I'm not ready to admit that I messed up yet. And then you talk to a friend about it. And then the friend's like, yeah, but have you thought about the fact that, you know, you're the one who messed up and now you caused this whole argument and now you're sitting here being a baby about it. And then you go, oh, duh. Wait. Big old baby. And then you fix it, right? Like that's, that's just what you do. We have an interesting thing that we do, people. You should hear this. 99.9% of the time, our arguments 
our they're settled just by one or the other of us just coming up to the other person and being like, would you like lunch? Are you hungry? Do you need a drink? It's like when one of us realizes the other one isn't mad anymore, everything just kind of dissolves. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's like we're both sitting there being butthurt that the other one is still mad. Well, yeah, like I said, sometimes quite literally when I've talked to like, God, in the past, really, I didn't have anybody to really talk to. Um, but I, when I would talk to somebody about like, like once or twice, Mitchell would ask me, what are you guys fighting about? I saw you guys were fighting in the car. I could tell. And I'd be like, ah, nothing big. It's just a communication issue. And then he'd be like, you know, dad, sometimes. And then he'd like, tell me like, cause he relates to like what you were saying. Or he would say to me, you know what? I understand what you're talking about, dad, but here's what works for me when I'm talking to Victoria. You have to say this and then it were and then she understands what you're saying well and it's true like if he connects on a different emotional level mm-hmm. and can understand that it just works better for him the words that he picked but it was he, he did that like twice with me um, yeah. and it was and both times spot on both times and you know you're just like yeah you're right i'm being stupid and then you go and you take care of it sometimes it doesn't get taken care of because i'm trying to to be honest, getting angry sometimes gives me the greatest momentum on work. And I'll be like cranking out one more video after another video after another video. And I'm just like, yes, Did just you, keep at just it. Just admit that you let me stew in your rage for no, extra not time. Let. Because not, let, you- not let. I just forget. I'm just into it. And it just goes from one to I the other to the thing. other. It, it just happens. Things. It just happens. I've I'm been here opposite. till eight o'clock at done. night sometimes. I know. Because I'll go outside. You'll come out. And then you'll run away and i'm like what the hell is she doing and then i wait and i wait and i wait and i wait and then i text you and what happens your fucking phone goes is your phone sitting on the couch i'm not mad by the way people i may sound it but i'm not i'm just excited and then then i'm like well shit i'm gonna go play the guitar and i'll come in here and i'll be waiting for you to come back and go okay i'm here i'm here and i close the door so i don't annoy everybody in the whole fucking world and you don't ever come and tell me anything. Then door, I go out there and it's like nine o'clock. Angry Mike. And then I open the door, it's nine o'clock. And I look out and I'm like, what the fuck? There's nobody here. Dogs are gone. Everyone's gone. And then as soon as I step foot outside, here comes Yogi. Because you never close the door when you, when you go to bed early, when you're mad. You just leave the door open. I'm the same way, so I shouldn't talk. But it's just funny. And then he the comes trying out. And it happens every time we have an argument later at night it's every a- time he does the same thing and then eventually brie will come out because she's too comfy in my snoogle she doesn't want to come out right. but then she'll come finally come out like why aren't you coming to bed daddy i leave the door open so that you don't feel like you can't come to bed i know if i want to come to bed I'm coming to bed i know but i don't want to make you uncomfortable sometimes i don't come to bed because i think it would make you uncomfortable well i'm here to tell you if the door's open won't make me uncomfortable. a good sign that's a good that's a good thing to know but anyway je- lest we continue down a pathway that we didn't actually plan to go down let's reel it back into i think that the guy is the asshole well because the poster is obviously a woman yeah yeah the dude's the yeah. asshole what the fuck is wrong with you in your head that you well, think you can come control somebody else's social media point. someone's gonna correct us so we're gonna fix this okay we're gonna gender neutralize it the poster the yes. post not the asshole significant other definitely the asshole what an asshole and like you said controlling 100 yeah. percent control the, there's 494 comments on that post posted two hours and they all ago. and do they all say and they all say bitch run yeah because because you know what i feel like you can have your opinion of something. But if the other person's not even willing to like listen to it and like compromise with you, it's never going to work. And you can't, and they're tending to say it compromise by going, Oh, we'll share an account. Yeah. That's oh. not a compromise, man. That's a hundred percent control. Think about it. They could change the password anytime they want and lock you right out. I mean, granted, you could do the same thing. But. My personal favorite was the last line. My fiance doesn't want to move forward with me, stating an independent attitude. 
And you know what's weird? That's the weirdest way to say something. So I guarantee you that's how he said it to her. Right. That's I can't why deal she, with your independent attitude. And that's why she repeated it because it doesn't make any sense to her either. Right. But that's why he needs to be just gone. Like there's something I'm sure she could there's something really wrong with this guy. We'll give her warm, loving hugs and not make her delete her social media like a controlling sociopath. But well, this dude, she's going to end up living in the basement, birthing ten thousand children. You know. Now I understand how he got into the whole relationship, yeah. Mamba Jumbo. I totally get it. And I think that's really the conclusion to all of this is start your damn relationship by trusting each other. Don't break the trust and you'll be happy forever together. You just will. Then there'd be no need for all this drama and cheating and, you know, whatever else. And, you know, I'm going to tell people something that I think is really insane to an extent. But I think that if if you I mean, this has to be legit. OK, that's important. That's a the variable it has to be legit no lying no making it up just because you want have some fantasy about some bullshit if you have a partner who really loves you and for whatever reason you had an issue in the bedroom and you felt like this person over here could help you with it i guarantee you if they believed that that someone that loved you would go along with that but there'd have to be a discussion you don't just go do your thing without telling them what you're doing you talk about it. And guess what? Even if you 100% believe it's the solution, if they say, no, I'm not comfortable, then the answer is no. Done. Finished. No arguing back. And that's very important. I think that's really important that in a relationship, you throw it out there to the other person and they respond. After that, just let it go. You have to accept the answer you get back. And that's what people are jitty at. Well, and we're really good at. On that super profound note, <laughs> good night, assholes. Ah. 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 thank you for listening to the nightly rant if you enjoyed the show please give us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts or google play if you didn't enjoy the show please just ignore that previous request for a rating this has been a yogi's podcast network production